Having developed an understanding as to how to use the risk assessment matrix to determine the level of risk, that is high, medium or low, for each of your identified risks, we now need to ensure that we understand the difference between the terms gross risk and residual risk. If, for example, certain controls or actions are already in place for some of the assessed risks in order to reduce or treat those risks, then you would need to take this into consideration and determine what the revised level of risk is, hence the term residual risk, or the risk that remains or is left over. If there are no controls in place, and therefore the risk assessment is being done for the first time, then you will be making decisions concerning the original or gross risk. So gross risk is the assessed risk level achieved and assumes that there are no controls or treatment actions already in place. Taking the airline company example, if a high risk assessment had been determined for the risk of an airline crash, the airline may have put in place a proactive and highly effective maintenance regime for their fleet of planes. Assuming this is the case, and this maintenance regime is in place and working effectively, then the original risk level may have been reduced and a new risk level assigned. This is known as the residual risk. Residual risk, therefore, is the risk that remains after taking controls or treatment actions into account. The residual risk will tell you whether you need to be concerned about your existing situation in your project. If you determine that the residual risk is high, you may need to take extra measures. In our airplane example, you could consider the following questions. Is there an effective maintenance regime in place? Are all planes maintained in accordance with this regime? And have the pilots and other crew had sufficient training? Remember that the risk cannot be eliminated completely and controls are designed to treat or reduce the risk to an acceptable level. We discussed this acceptable level in the previous video and referred to it as the risk appetite, which is generally understood to be the amount of risk a project manager will accept in meeting the project's objectives. In defining the risk appetite, the project manager should ensure that the appetite aligns to the risk culture, purpose, vision and values of the organisation and the environment in which the project is being undertaken. You should now be able to see why it is important to understand about gross risk and residual risk. So considering our Western Savannah case, for the risks that you have assessed, do you think that these would be gross or residual risks? What might you have to further consider before finalising your risk assessment?